In this video, you get everything you need to know once you land in Guatemala City and how do you get to Antigua. Stay tuned. This video is helpful so that when you come to Guatemala, you know exactly what to do. Enjoy. All right, so we're getting off here. If you're coming to Guatemala, you need to check out this video so you can get all the inside information as to what to do once you get here. So once you get off, that's the bathroom right there. But that's not the only bathroom. There's another bathroom at the end of the hallway once you go down the escalator and right before you hit the customs booth. The women's bathroom right there. And then that is where you get minutes, also known as saldo. So you get minutes and currency. So you can exchange your dollars for quetzales, euros for quetzales, and you can actually get your mobile SIM card. Um, if you're one of those people who needs data, I highly suggest that's where you do it and you can change your money, then go get the SIM card right there. That's my recommendation. So here's the line for immigration. That's where you go to pick up your bags. And then this is what custom looks like. There's a stoplight looking thing. Uh, these are a group, so they're not going to do it. So I got a green light, and so I'm free to pass. And yeah, that's basically it. So this is customs, and if they stop you, you have to go over there to the left and get your stuff checked. What you do if you want to rent a car, but if you want to do a shuttle, you can go over there. And this is where you go if you want a taxi. I use a taxi service at the airport because it's supposedly safe and checked out. Um, I haven't had an inc any incidents. I haven't heard of any incidents, but I'm pretty sure they happen. So just be careful, be safe. Make sure you let people know where you are, when you're going, and try to notify other people. And it's good to have the minutes um, in purchasing saldo. And so uh, that's just a good policy. All right, so now I'm going to teach you how to fill out the SAT immigration form. This is for the NIT or kind of like the social security number of Guatemala. So uh, for the most part, if you're just visiting, you won't need to fill in that box. So this next section here, if you're arriving, you're gonna mark this box. And then if you're departing, you're gonna click this box. So you're gonna have to fill out this form in both cases where you're entering the country and when you're leaving the country. So make sure you check the right box. Ingreso, arrival, check that box, or salida, departure, check that box. Then you're going to put the date in which you're traveling, and that should be a two-digit date. So that's a, you know, if, if it's only a one-digit, you're going to put a zero, so zero, nine, for example. And then same thing with the month. So that would be like a zero, one, and then the year, the last two digits of the year. So there'd be one, nine in the year of 2019. In question one, it's gonna ask you the same type of question. So are you arriving or are you departing? What you're going to want to do is you're gonna write arrival or departure, uh, or if you wanna write in Spanish, you can write ingreso or egreso, and you can put that in that box right there. In part two, you wanna put the last name, apayido. Um, that's kind of your surname. That's another word for surname. And then in box three is your first name. So if you have two first names, so for example, uh, Maria Jose or Edgar Jose or something like that, that's what you would write there. And then for the passport piece, normally nine times out of 10, you're gonna write the passport, um, ORD, which stands for ordinary passport. And then if you're traveling for official documents or what, uh, whatever, you're going to say official business. Um, or if you're a diplomat, you write it there. And then you write your passport number here. 
But don't forget to check your gender here, male, female, and then your profession here in number six. Uh, you can be general or specific, that's kind of up to you. And then your nationality, because I'm coming from the US, I would say USA, that works as well. And then wherever you reside. So USA for, for me, wherever you were born, whatever country that is. And then this date here, a lot of people mess this up. This is your birth date, and it doesn't say birth date, date of birth, but that's what this in, this box indicates because you already write the date up here. So this would be a two-digit date, this would be a two-digit month, and then the two-digit year, the last two digits. And then for the foreseen address, you can either put Guatemala City, you can put Chimaltenango, Antigua, wherever you're gonna be going in Guatemala, that's what you would put in that area. Now, if you're departing, you would just put simply whatever city you're going to, okay? So like if you're going to Chicago, you would put Chicago. If you're going to New York, you would put New York. All right, and so for the country of departure, again, this is dependent on whether you're coming in or you're leaving. So country of departure, you would put, if you're coming from the US, USA, and then country of destination, you would put Guatemala in this next box. Now, if you're departing, you would say Guatemala in the top box and then USA in this next box for box 12. So I hope that makes sense. The motive and the purpose of your travel, so when you're coming into the country, if you're arriving, then you would say my purpose of the travel is tourism, unless you are a resident here, obviously, or if you have official business, oficial, or if you're here on business and then, or maritime or other. So you probably won't do maritime if you're flying in, Unless the only time you would do that is like if you're on a tour, uh, on a on a tour boat or a cruise cruise liner that sort of thing. Um, transit is for bus, and then by ground is if you're driving in. Okay, so then you would mark if you're flying in, you would probably do uh, for tourism. That's why I'm here, and then the the mode of transport. Uh, generally by air, again by ground. That's if you're driving in, and then by sea. So. If you're flying by plane, uh, you would fill in the airline and then you would fill in the actual flight number. So here, number 15, you would actually fill in the airline and then the flight number. So whatever it is, if it's Spirit, if it's American Airlines, if it's Avianca, Aeromexico, whatever, you would fill that in in this line. And then the next box is box 16. And this is in regards to the law about carrying currency. So international law says you're not allowed to travel with over $10,000 worth of currency, uh, US dollars that is. And so normally you should be checking no. And if you have more than $10,000, you better check yes, because otherwise you're gonna get in trouble. And so I highly suggest that you do that. And so, if you are carrying more, if you mark yes in this box, then you actually have to fill out how much you're carrying, you know, uh, put the credit or title, the amount, and then the origin of funds. Like they wanna know why you're carrying so much cash and then you're gonna have some questions answered because they will stop you at customs. So last but not least, you're going to sign here under next to firma signature and you're gonna sign there. And then you're gonna notice that there is a carbon copy and you wanna take both to, you're gonna notice that there's a carbon copy underneath and you wanna make sure that you take both and you want to give this to the SAT agent. So you know you are starting getting close to Antigua when you start seeing the billboards and literally the road starts winding down. Well guys, I hope this video has been helpful. I hope I've been able to give you some value as to what your trip might entail next time you come down to Antigua, Guatemala. Take care, safe travels. Uh, so it's four o'clock in the morning, headed to the airport. And the reason why I'm leaving so early is because traffic in Guatemala City starts building up at five. And it takes about an hour to get there. So if you want to get to your plane on time, everybody suggests that you leave early. And 
I know that to be true. I use Omega Travel and they give good rates and they also are very nice people and I, I use them a lot and uh, they're pretty awesome. Okay, gracias, orale. All right, so just arriving here at the airport, getting my bags and I'm going to, you gotta get dropped off here. I walk across the international airport and then make sure you're gonna have to show your passport here and there's a lot of people, so they're not actually in line, so you just have to get past them and then go here to get your passport out. Let's see us. That's us. At this point, I am standing at the United Airlines terminal, carry on sort of baggage thing over there and sometimes they're strict about putting your baggage in to check whether or not you can actually take it sometimes it's free depending on your flight status as well they will either give you free baggage or not charge you for overweight the security sticker this means that you've got checked in this escalator and you're going to go towards security some of the things remember is that you need to take off uh, your shoes belts metal me metallic objects so you're going down the escalator you go towards security and then right as you're getting off it looks like there's a security line there but nobody ever looks this way and goes to the security line over here so i always check to make sure this security line is open because it's generally shorter and not many people know about it and there it is there's nobody at that line that's pretty cool. All right, so this is the second line. You're gonna get checked over there by a, a guy. Um, he's gonna check your stuff just so you can get into the security line. You have metal detectors and you have to take out your computers and so on and so forth. Then you have to pick a line to go to the customs. So the green light means it's available. The red light means it's not. Um, and generally pick the shortest line and then this is where you're gonna give up your your immigration exit departure form so pick the shortest line and good, good luck there's an airport lounge that serves pretty good hot breakfast um, and they offer Wi-Fi as long as you're buying something so it looks like the place is actually called airport lounge and Essentially, it is located as you turn left from the customs immigration form. Heading towards the gate, and this is gonna be what it looks like. You can buy a lot of stuff, last minute souvenirs, until you get to your gate. So I hope this video of how to navigate the Guatemala airport has been helpful. And if you like this video, make sure you click like, hit subscribe, and click the notification bell to make sure you receive our future videos. Adios. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I really, really hope you like this video. Our question of the day is, how do you learn best? Are you an auditory learner? Or perhaps a more visual learner, or even tactile? Let us know in the comments below. If you're ready to take your Spanish to the next level, Feel free to take a free class with one of our awesome and great instructors. Just visit us at www.spanish.academy slash free dash class. And we teach Spanish one-on-one -on -one in a very personalized way, depending on how you learn best. Additionally, it's an incredibly flexible program, so you can schedule your classes around your busy life. Take your first step towards fluency today. Adios.